All right, we are now joined by UCLA head coach Corey Close and student athletes Charisma Osborne and Kiki Rice. We will get started from an opening statement from Coach Close, followed by questions for the student athletes. Coach Close. Um, I, I first of all want to say um, how important it is to be able to play at home how thankful I am for the work that goes into getting that great crowd tonight. Uh, it was electric and uh, fun, and to do that when there's no students on campus, uh, kids are gone for spring break, uh, all of those factors, and the way that our administration, support staff, marketing, uh, athletic communication, I'm sure I'm leaving people out, work to get that crowd. I just want to say uh, how thankful we are. Uh, credit to uh, Cal Baptist. I think um, they're just so well coached. They know who they are. I thought we did a pretty good job limiting their three-point looks. I think at halftime they were one for nine, um, but they got off, what, 14, I think, or 12 in the second half. Um, we've got, it's going to be the number one thing for our game against Creighton, so just really want to give credit to them um, for just how well coached they are. They won, you know, they only lost three games all year for a reason. Uh, credit to them, but really proud of these two right here. I uh, just think that even though we were taking good shots, I thought, in the first half, for the most part, I think we fell in love with the three a little bit for a period of time, but we um, were taking good shots and we weren't being rewarded, and these two steadied the ship. And uh, They kept hunting for the right shots. I mean, Charisma had nine rebounds in the first half. And I just think her senior leadership was so huge. And obviously, um, how she had 15, uh, 15, 15, and 9, as I have that right, um, was just huge for us. And then Kiki, I thought, beginning of the game especially, was just the only one hitting jump shots. And then we got, were able to get her out in transition a little bit more. She was able to get downhill uh, in those situations, and, and they really steadied us. So, um, you know, bottom line is every game is going to require something slightly different. And if you want to earn another opportunity, you got to step up to whatever that game presents. And they stepped up and made that happen, and I'm proud to be able to prepare for another game. We're going to open it up for questions in the room. We're going to go front corner here. Coach, ladies, congratulations on the win. Crystal Rich, KTLA 5 Local News. Um, Kiki. Two-part question for you. This, from the eye test, just seemed like an incredibly fast-paced and physical game. Your thoughts on the physicality? And second question, you guys went into the half with a 12-point lead. What was working really well in the second half to allow you guys to pull away so much? Yeah, um, definitely was a fast physical, physical game. They have a lot of quick guards, and they play like basically five guards the entire time. So we knew that we'd have to really get out in the perimeter and um, you know, be ready to defend. And I think, you know, at halftime, we felt good. We know that we knew we weren't hitting our shots, but we felt like, you know, those are going to fall in the second half. Let's continue to do the things that were working for us. And we felt like that was getting the ball into the post um, to continuing to put an emphasis on, like, guarding by ourselves, defending without fouling, and then um, really just keeping to attack and transition. And I think we came out uh, being in the third quarter and did those things really well. We're going to go to the second row on the end here. Ben Baltos, Angeles Times. Uh, Charisma, did you know you were one assist short of a triple-double? And Kiki, did you know that you could have given it to her with that three-pointer in the last minute? Yeah, I did know. <laughs> but it's okay. Right. She'll make the next one. <laughs> we were all trying to get her the opportunity. It was great to have her get that one in the corner to uh, London. Uh, we were trying to put us in a situation where they had to choose between the pocket pass to Christine um, or the fill behind person, and so, um, but you know, I think uh, she'd rather have the win any day. We're gonna go in the front corner here. Chris Rich again, KTLA. Um, Charisma coach mentioned it. You had nine rebounds at the half. In the second half, though, it felt like you really found your shot. What led you to feeling more comfortable? And I just want to remind you, like you kind of opened the quarter with that shot, that jumper. You got your own steal, led to the Kiki and one. What led to you just feeling so comfortable? Yeah, I think just letting go of what happened in the first half and just being more confident in the second half. Um, we have like reset routines, so I did mine and just kind of let go and just know, I, I knew that I put in the work to make those shots. So that kind of just was my mindset. And um, I think everyone pretty much had that mindset going into the second half. And then just one last question for you, Charisma. Um, early in the season, you told me that you four went the MBA, the WNBA, um, to come back here because you felt like this team was special. After your first one in the tournament, like, how are you feeling about this team now? Yeah, my feelings haven't changed. I think, 
I think we are really special and we have so many different weapons offensively and defensively and um, tonight you guys saw like we didn't even have Lauren playing tonight and soon hopefully we'll get her back um, but we're so talented and I know that this team can really go far as long as we keep doing um, what the coaches are asking us to do. Second row on the near side. Uh, ben Balch again. Uh, can you uh, talk about the boost that Gabriella gave you tonight uh, in that start, uh, her toughness, just, you know, more minutes she got, the bigger impact uh, she had on the game. Yeah, I think Gabs did a fantastic job today. Um, you know, she stepped in playing starting at the four, and that's not really what she's been playing most of the season. But one thing about Gabs is that she's always willing to do uh, whatever it takes to help this team win. And I think she's been studying the plays at the four, just um, figuring out what she needs to do. And she came out, she rebounded well, she was calling for the ball, and really, and was really aggressive. And I th th think that really helped us. And I really just loved how, like, she's like, get me the ball inside. Like, every time out, she's like, they can't stop me. And I think the team <laughs> saw that. And even Coach Corey emphasized that at halftime. So I really love that confidence that she had in herself. We're going to go front row with the black suit jacket. Excuse me. Gavin Carlson, Daily Bruin. Uh, Coach, we've talked in the past. Questions about... for the student athletes only. We'll get to Coach oh, close in a minute. Apologies, my bad. Um, sorry. For the players. They're um, more interesting anyway. <laughs> my bad. Um, it felt like <laughs> the Cal Baptist like, student section seemed pretty loud. Did it kind of feel so abnormal being at home but having to almost face a road environment at times, especially when they went on that, I believe, 10-0 run at some point? Yeah, I mean, they definitely brought a lot of fans, but I thought that made it a great environment. Um, and to see their student section normally where, like, the den is for us, it was, it was definitely interesting. But, um, no, it was, it was fun. The, uh, I think, you know, they did a great job bringing their fans here, and, um, and we also had a lot of great fans. So just that environment made it, the game um, that much better to play in. And I think it kind of reminded me of Oklahoma last year. Like, they had a good amount of fans. So it kind of was a little similar to that. But it makes it fun when the other team has fans and the crowd is going back and forth. We're going back and forth. Any more questions for student athletes? Lauren Wayne, the Daily Bruin. Um, how did you all stay anchored without Lauren? And how did the four-game stretch in the middle of the season without her inform what you all did today? Yeah, I think the stretch where we didn't have Lauren definitely helped us um, today just because we knew how we needed to play without her. Um, but was, I think it was still great to hear her voice on the sideline um, and just how supportive she was, and she'll be back soon. We're going to go in the second row on the far side. Hey, congrats, ladies. Um, you guys talk about letting it go at halftime or, or Gab's confidence. Um, how much of this, like you guys have been together for two years now, the chemistry has grown. How much has like, the, ex the last two years of experience sort of helped with those types of things in the crunch? I think it's helped a lot. Um, we know each other really well. We know, like I know what Kiki's go-to moves are, what she really likes. It's like she's really good in transition and getting downhill. Um, so I think just over the last two years, just working together a lot, talking, and just with anyone on the team, like we all know what um, each other does really well, and we try to put each other in those positions. Right, that's all we have time for for the student athletes. Uh, thank you, ladies, for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>
forcing to flatten out their defense so that we were able to get other things as well as her touches in that area. But Gabs has been a warrior. And you just see that she's just maturing in her confidence. And, you know, she texted me last night, was like, okay, can you send me the plays at the floor four that we think we're going to use the most? And, uh, and then, you know, I checked in with her this morning. She's like, I'm ready, coach. I'm ready. You know, she just loves this so much. And she um, is so proud to wear those four letters and such a competitor. She's tough. You know, you look at over her first two years and you look at the most pressurized moments and who was really comfortable in those moments, Gabs always rises to the top. And she, as she's adding to her toolbox and her skill set and then having that mentality uh boy the future is bright for gabs third row in the white top finally <laughs> thank you um Haley sawyer socal news group um Corey, i know this week um urgency and like punching first was a yeah. huge emphasis for you so how well do you think they executed that tonight and are you confident they can kind of carry it over into monday too well if they want to play you know, if they want to keep playing, they're going to have to, right? Um, I think that's the name of the game in this tournament. There's, uh, can you respond quickly? Can you grow significantly? Can you execute a brand new scouting report with a completely different uh, set of expectations and responses that are going to be needed? And, you know, I think um, that's the key to making a deep run in March is uh, can you do that? Can you have that kind of consistent urgency and understanding that every possession matters? That's not a cliche. Uh, that's like reality. If you don't treat it that way, you're probably, it'll be your last game. So I, I just think it's very simple. Do you want to keep playing? Then you better punch first and punch often and better stay locked in mentally for 40 minutes. I thought we were B plus in that area. I thought we had some lapses in there that we needed to be better about. And um, But I thought we responded quicker. Both timeouts I had to call, we responded out of those and made big runs out of both those timeouts. And my challenge to them in the locker room was, can you do that on your own? Can you do that at a dead ball or after a free throw? Can you connect and make that response quicker and not wait for a timeout to make those things happen? We're going to go second row on the near side. Just want to check on Lauren, what happened there, and uh, what's her availability going forward for Creighton? Yeah, I'm hopeful. Um, you know, nothing major. Um, I'm hopeful we're going to be able to get her back, um, you know, hopefully on Monday. I don't know yet for sure, but uh, we are hopeful that we're going to be able to have her on Monday. We're going to go front row on the near side. Coach, uh, when asked about gaps, you were talking about toughness. Just wondering your thoughts on the toughness of London tonight. Felt like she stretched the floor for you, took a nasty fall, got back in that game shortly after, made some plays defensively. What did yeah. you see? I, I mean, London is just, um, she's so feisty. And my challenge to her is making plays whether she shoots well or not. Obviously, when, when London's cooking from the three-point line, but I think she was one for seven in the first half. And what I love, I always love the response back, right? Um, making some steals on defense, you know, um, getting in there, uh, tacking off the bounce, setting up something for somebody else. And I had just gotten on her pretty good. Um, she had had a turnover and a missed assignment on defense and then came back in and made that big play, big three. And I just, I love her competitive response. And uh, London's a huge piece for us. And I really was hoping to get her going more. I felt like we weren't getting her enough quality threes. I thought she got them tonight and just didn't make them, but I don't want her to lose heart. I know what she's earned, and I know who she is and the time she puts in. I want her to feel confident. If it's your shot, you shoot your shot. We're going to go front row in the middle. Coach, I think it, I think it was 2019. It's the, before the pandemic is mm. all but you all have faced Creighton here before in this building. Um, what is what is going to be familiar about this meeting on Monday and what's going to be different? Because obviously both teams are completely different. Yeah, well, they have five seniors and they are incredibly experienced. And, you know, watching that UNLV game, wow, they are just so disciplined. Uh, he is one of the best coaches, and Jim is one of the best coaches in the country. Uh, I've watched him year after year after year, um, you know, and so they're going to give us everything. When that when that bracket came out, I said, wow, they're going to be a big challenge. And I've already been studying some film on them, preparing. Um, I've had to prepare for all three opponents, possible opponents this weekend. And, um, you know, they just, they they use, set and use off-ball screens as well as anybody in the country. And they just, set, they just keep coming. Um, and it's going to be really 
important that we communicate away from the ball. We switch a lot of screen, uh, ball screens, but we don't usually um, do that off the ball, and they're going to put us in some difficult situations that way. I don't think they've changed that much. I just think they're extremely <laughs> experienced and um, very, very well coached. That's all we have time for. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate all you guys being here. I do have one last thing. We had 9,000 here today. Can we beat that Monday? Can we just get the buzz out? And we can't beat that if you guys aren't continuing to help us build that story. It's really important to us. So thank you in advance. And uh, let's keep the buzz going and let's pack this place Monday. Thank you.